What a tremendous pleasure it is. And I have to say, the last couple of days, the, the great honor that I've had to travel with um, Esther, who is uh, doing extraordinary work and precisely the kind of uh, uh, farmer that is just such a privilege to be able to work with and support. Uh, well, I am Molly Harris Olson. I'm formerly the chair of the International Board of Fair Trade and uh, was on the Fair Trade Board for uh, nearly six years, um, which is a fantastic thing because you get a real global view of what fair trade is doing. So my team often points out that I think globally still, uh, and so they've provided some uh, more, do more domestic uh, perspectives. But it is important to remember that the reason fair trade got going uh, is that even though we have succeeded in, in many ways um, in changing the global economy and making it slightly more sustainable, there are still many, many problems. And in many commodities, uh, this is exactly what the economy looks like. It's an hourglass where in the case of cocoa, 90% of all cocoa is produced by small farmers in the poorest parts of the world. Many people that don't have basic uh, water uh, education, the kinds of things that we take for granted every day. That funnels then into only eight companies uh, that actually control the supply of cocoa worldwide and only three grinders that are primarily the grinders for cocoa all over the world and then five confectionery companies. That is an extraordinary way to run a global economy. We then of course have billions of us that eat cocoa chocolate every day, most of us. So, uh, and again, to go back to the, to the farmers, three and a half to 6% is what an average uh, value back to the farmer is for every cocoa bar that we buy. That's an extraordinary way to run a global economy. That is certainly not sustainable. And we find that in most, most commodities. So in many, many uh, coffee, others that we work with in fair trade, this is the global situation that we are trying to uh, change. Now, one of the things that is um, also uh, part of uh, what we're trying to do really is not just in a couple of commodities. We have seven major commodities, but actually our goal is to create long-term sustainable livelihoods for people everywhere and to enable them to have a choice in the future. So it's actually um, uh, a big challenge that we face and we can't do this on our own. Fair trade is unique. There are um, traders uh, that do all kinds of things. We bought coffee this morning, Pete and I, and asked if they were fair trade and they said, no, we, we buy our coffee from Bogota. And they gave us a little card. And uh, uh, I think the comment they made was, it's even better than fair trade. And the only thing I would say about that, <laughs> we smiled, <laughs> ah, uh, is there's actually a lot of that going on. And this happened also um, in uh, environmental uh, things. So, so environment stuff started to get really powerful and really significant. And then there were kind of the free riders on the environment. And we called it greenwashing. Well, we now have, unfortunately, um, a, a big challenge because it is a really important thing to be fair trade. And a lot of coffee shops all over Melbourne, all over Sydney will say, we buy our coffee from Juan. Uh, one of our coffee traders in Denver recently um, was asked about this concept of direct trade. And he said, well, it's kind of like the difference between Superman and Usain Bolt. We know that Superman can run faster and jump higher. The problem is we just don't know if he's real. And with Usain Bolt, we can measure how high he jumps, how, how fast he runs. And we know exactly, and someone's checking to see whether he's cheating. So when we th think about how fair trade is unfolding, we have to remember that one of the really important things about fair trade is that transparent, independent certification that provides that, that comfort so that we actually know and we can test whether Hussein Bolt is jumping high and running fast or whether there's some problems. And in fair trade, we actually have in the past on many occasions, and in fact, uh, one of my colleagues was just in Fiji recently having to uh, deal with some governance issues in Fiji. We actually are in there helping them to do a better job to ensure that they're adhering to these standards and somebody is actually checking. <laughs> so that's an important thing. The other vital thing about fair trade is we provide um, the minimum price, which enables the, um, the businesses to have a, a floor so that the commodity as it's going up and down and up and down in the world uh, has got some security for them. Uh, then of course there's the tradable commodity and then on top of that is the premium. The premium is what I like to think of as the development dividend because that's what is invested in the community and last year it was about 85 million euros. Um, in development uh, of their choice. Um, so if we, if we look at recently, the United Nations actually looked at what is um, the most successful kinds of impact of, of various sorts of initiatives around the world to try to alleviate poverty. And it turns out that actually the communities owning 
the projects, the communities being able to be the drivers of those projects is far more important than how much money actually gets poured into a community. Because if you're pouring it in on something that they don't think they need, um, then it, it doesn't have the same uh, value in the community. But you'll hear a lot more about that from Esther. So one of the things that was very exciting for me uh, as the chair of the International Board was it was during my time that we um, actually changed the Constitution. And uh, going far beyond what most organizations would be in terms of either charities or empowerment organizations, we actually created a constitution that enabled the producers that we serve. So Esther, for example, is now half the owner of the global system of fair trade. The global system of fair trade is about 5 billion euros. It's actually more than that in traded commodities every year. Um, the producers are now half owners, they are half represented on the board, and this is quite an extraordinary thing. It's actually taken us 25 years of work in the fair trade system to get enough of our producers up to a level of governance where they could serve on an international board, but here we are. It's an extraordinary thing, and that was one of the greatest uh, privileges of my time uh, on the international board. So again, the market is actually well past 4.8 now. It's actually past 5 uh, million euros. We sell our products in about 25, 125 countries around the world. Approximately uh, 1.3 million farmers and producers around the world in 70 countries. And um, we have about uh, over, well over 11,000 producer organizations around the world. Um, the other thing that is uh, really interesting about fair trade is that we have um, over 1,400 fair trade towns. Uh, in the world. And the fair trade towns movement has been a very powerful source of, share, of, of growing the market, of, of creating the, the supply, the, the demand pull, as we like to call it, in the fair trade system that goes from the producers right into the marketplace. So that's been a very exciting thing. And um, of course, the fair trade label is actually um, more recognized than any other ethical label in the world and more trusted. So nine out of 10 people that uh, know the label trust the label. And um, it's, it's very interesting, but in places like the UK, there's like 97%, we're right up there, with, we're in the top four with Coca-Cola actually in the UK, of, of um, recognized trust marks in, in, or brands in, in the UK. And the average in Europe would be about 80% recognition. Uh, in Australia, we have about 50% recognition. We're uh, in the early days, we've only been here for about um, uh, seven or eight years, so we have a little ways to go. But uh, it's very, very exciting what that can bring. So this is what uh, the Australian market looks like at the present time. You can see very consistent uh, and very exciting growth in these key commodities. Um, but this over 200 million uh, in sales is really, um, would be doubled uh, by the cafe uh, uh, quotes if we could get those figures uh, accurately in there. Uh, and that depends on how much coffee is being directly bought from one. Um, the next, um, uh, the next uh, wonderful thing that w has been really my um, passion uh, coming down from the International Board is what we can do regionally. So if we think about the global system of fair trade, 25 years experience between Europe uh, starting in Latin America but then growing Africa. So our producers, the number of producers, the amount of product that is supplied uh, from producers into primarily European markets but all over the world um, has been growing and growing and that's, a, that's easily our strongest. Uh, we then spent the last five years focused very much on Africa and we really brought Africa up in a, in a period of five years to about half of what took us 25 years to do in Latin America in terms of the producers we're supporting, the commodities we're able to bring through the supply chains into the markets. Now we, hear, we sit here on the room of Asia. Australia is the uh, largest uh, office in, in, uh, market in, New Zealand, in, in the region. And Asia should be the fastest growing largest market of anywhere in the world. I mean, we have the opportunity here to grow tremendously. And we already have uh, new markets in India, in uh, the Philippines, in South Korea. The South Korean market within its first year was selling about 12 million um, in fair trade sales. So it's very, very exciting to be in this part of the world. And I say to the team, you know, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else right now in the fair trade world because this is where we have the greatest opportunity to connect regional supply with regional markets in a way that really, really supports um, the, the poorest of the communities in the Pacific. If we, we, we've got a major deal going right now with um, vanilla, for instance, in Tonga, that will radically change by a factor of probably four or five, the entire national economy of the country of Tonga. Um, you can imagine, with this kind of, of, of opportunity, we could just do enormous things in this region. And of course, we can't do it alone. We need uh, corporate partners, we need community partners. So it's an exciting place to be in an exciting time. Uh, this is just an example of one of the very exciting things, which is the very first uh, shipment of cocoa out of Papua New Guinea. Um, 
from cocoa farmers in the province of Medang. Um, it was a, a cooperative of 629 co cocoa farmers, and they achieved fair trade certification, and the very first shipment has just come to be used uh, in Australia for Cadbury Dairy Milk. And this is just you know, a wonderful thing. We'd like to see much, much, much more regional supply and regional supporters of producers. Because of course, one of the challenges that we have in Australia is we have people coming, uh, you know, refugees that are genuinely in desperate need coming to our shores constantly. Wouldn't it be fantastic if we could help create economic prosperity in the places where people are and where actually they really do want to stay? So that's one of our very major goals. But it requires all levels uh, to do that. So we have a fantastic system. It is um, been tested for 25 years, and we believe that Asia is the next big horizon, the next big um, uh, opportunity. And uh, we need all the partners that we can get, both um, in terms of community campaigns, in, com in terms of corporations partnering with us. We have some big goals on things like cotton. Um, we would really like to see what we call a big switch where um, a major supply chain actually helps us to create major, major changes uh, in the regional supply. And uh, there are a couple of opportunities like that. So it is a real pleasure and a real honor to be here today. Uh, we appreciate it. We have a campaign that we're launching while Esther is here called The Power of You. Uh, and this is really to um, help us engage all of us across Australia in what we can do uh, for our producers in the region and for the world. So without further ado, I'd like to thank you all for being here and um, invite Esther.